much thing about cancer, I think, is it's such a lonely disease. Road to Damascus event, um, which was that um, I was coming back from Glasgow from visiting the relatives and things with Helena, and Mark was going back down to London, and we both passed each other on Glasgow Central Station. But as you know, there's a West Coast line and an East Coast line, and we were going back on the West Coast line to Euston, and he was going back on the East Coast line to King's Cross. So we weren't on the same train, but I saw him and I said, oh, what, "What are you up to, Mark?" And he said, "I'm teaching at a school in, in the south of England, but..." That's going to finish sometime soon. I said, <laughs> ring me when you get down to London. I've got an idea. These are absolutely unique faces. These are faces that people don't see, and portrait painters don't see. And to give a portrait painter the opportunity to paint these uh, unique, exquisite faces, I mean, they, uh, they, they may be exquisitely bad, but, um, but, you know, but, but absolutely unusual faces. Stretch and stand up and walk about. Okay, well anyway, so I'll see you on on Wednesday then. Alright? Okay. And then I'll see you lots the week after. And then hopefully before maybe when once you come out of hospital, I'll have already done the other painting. I'll definitely you know, I will have definitely okay. started on the other picture. Okay. Um, you know, before we were being held up and also the photographs I took. Mm -hmm. A few weeks ago weren't very weren't as good. These ones will be better. So definitely there'll be okay. other pictures. All right. You know, it's not often that an artist gets. You know, there's so many things that make this absolutely unique for any artist. It's not often that the you know the the sitters, the models of your paintings that you you have such sort of detailed data as they call it coming back as to what they as to what they've actually thought of them. You know, it's terrifically moving, you know, it's terrifically mo moving and it's terrifically, well, it's terrifically rewarding for me. Now the critical thing is, have you taken photographs of her?
So what I would do for each, I'd wait till the point, maybe when the operation was at its, the head was at its, you know, was completely unveiled or was at its peak, so in as much of how much was being exposed and so on. And then ask to, if it was okay for me to come in and do my bit. And what I would then do is just quickly shoot off a whole film of details and then join that together like a jigsaw to make the the whole composition and so that's how I did the operation pictures and I stopped drawing as well because actually when you were drawing in many ways what you were doing was worrying more about the drawing and what was happening in the on in the op in the operating theatre and actually it was you know it was endlessly fascinating it was an incredible experience to be there you know I must have been to about 30 40 operations um, during my time there and I was more than happy really just to stand there and watch. Tuba, is it hurting you down here by your hand or is it hurting you up here by your elbow? Mm -hmm. Whereabouts? <laughs> by your elbow? You can bend your hand, you know. It's hurting you down there, is it? Down here? Okay. Alright. Well, I think you should look at that and consider whether... Um, she doesn't... she can have antibiotics orally. She can have everything orally as far as I'm concerned. Okay? I think we'll also uh, just uh, remove the arterial line. Yes. Just to Which is the arterial line, sir? Yes. Which is the arterial line? Okay. Yeah, I think uh, get rid of the arterial line. That may be the cause of her pain. Okay? All right. We'll take away some of the drips in your arm to try and get the pain better, all right? And we've taken away all the bumps on your face, but we've given you another massive great bump. It's going to take a few days to go down and you'll be very, very bruised and battered. You'll be black and blue. But uh, it all went very well. Can you open your eyes? Can you see me clearly? Okay. Right. Have you got any pain in your head? No pain in your head? Sometimes. Okay. Right. Where is the pain in your head? Just over there. Okay. Well, I'm very pleased with it. It all went well, and you're going to be even more beautiful now than you were before. And what I want you to do today is I want you to try eating and drinking. I want you to sit up out of bed. Do you feel happy to do that? Are you filming that? Yeah, sorry. Um, that's all right. Um, yes. I've seen that the I've seen and I hadn't the, anticipated how successful I was in my choice of uh, of artist because he was not only an artist but also a, a nice guy who yes. um, who became close to the patients just like I'm close to the patients um, and they were able to confide in him in a much better way. Um, they would also in, interestingly um, ask him about their operation because he was there while they were asleep and he would describe their operation to them. So you know, it, it was uh, so there were all sorts of things going on there that I'd never predicted. It was harder for me to be able to judge the quality of the pictures um, because the images are, you know, the old image is just so much, you know, supersedes everything. The image is just so powerful, and so there's this kind of strange relationship I have with the surgical pictures when I'm producing them. Um, it's quite a uh, contrast with the the portraits where I'm very much more familiar with the, what I'm dealing with. So these are quite early ones as well and I don't, you know, there's a lot to do with this as well as this sort of um, psychologically the contrast working on these as opposed to the portraits and the sort of process. There's also, you know, there's, always, there's things like texture, the wetness, the shininess, the, 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 the way the light plays on the on the head during the operation, that's a completely different set of um, textures than you would normally have, than I would normally be used to painting. You know, normally I'm used to you're painting sort of like rubbery skin, and so I had, I had to get to grips with that. So these are quite early ones where, you know, maybe don't quite have that information. When he painted Mazida, and I look at that portrait of Mazida, and you know, I could almost get tears in my eyes now because I can't I mm. cry very easily mm. thinking about it because it actually does. It was the first portrait where Mark had captured 
really, really captured the emotion of the, of the person. We were showing not only a physical transformation, but we were also showing an emotional transformation of the patients. But she's actually got a Mona Lisa-like smile. And this is exactly what she's like. She's blind in her right eye, but you'd never guess that. Um, the tumour blinded it because it squeezed the optic nerve behind the eye and, and cut off its blood supply. And so she was blind before she had the surgery. But she is just a wonderful, wonderful little girl. He said, you could do me with my wig and gowns on. And I kind of locked onto that straight away. And, you know, and it was terrific, you know. So, you know, we, he got dressed up um, and we did the painting. And, uh, you know, and hopefully, you know, and I, I, I kind of always stay, stay clear of narrative in the painting, direct narrative. But obviously what you have there is a single image. But hopefully a single image actually says a lot about him, you know. So, as well as the fact that he is a barrister, the fact that he looks the way he does and yet he's having to put on a performance in court and mm. so on, you know, that then comes across. But then hopefully the character of the person, so the sort of joie de vivre that he has and the, the character and this kind of the sparkle in his eye and so on, I mean he's an amazing, absolutely fantastic person and uh, you know, and every time, every time you see him, I, every time I speak to him you're always left with a smile on your face at the end and so on. I thought it might help the patients come to terms with what they had done, uh, have a cathartic effect, you know, the, the whole process of having the painting done, sitting for the painting, then seeing the finished product might in some way benefit them emotionally and psychologically. Uh, I had a feeling that it, that it, that it might be beneficial. So, so that's really what I wanted to do. How I, why I wanted to set it up. And I had some money. Um, when my mother died, I put money into a research fund and I had some money and I thought I'd like to pay uh, for an artist in residence. I got an idea of this just from talking to the patients, but then having heard what the patients were then saying to the psychologist, you then realise that, you know, some patients might, might some patients uh, before might have found it difficult to look at photographs of themselves or to look in the mirror but they find the paintings, there was one patient that said that he found the painting the first positive image of himself he'd ever seen. Are you happy? Are you? It was a horrible thing to have, wasn't it? Yeah. Not a very nice operation, was it? It's certainly massively better. Um, and we'll just have to wait and see how things develop. She's still a bit swollen. From the operation, she's a bit puffy around the eye and things, mm -hmm. but that will get better as time goes on.